Good morning and welcome to the podcast to be named later here on the DK Pittsburgh Sports Podcasting Network. My name is Alex Stumpf. My co-host, Jerry Prugar, just couldn't be here this week, so we had to replace him. Uh, filling in as the pinch hitting podcast host, uh, right-handed pitcher for the Pittsburgh Parks, Max Kranick. Max, how's it going, man? Good, Alex. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. This is a bit of an upgrade, you know, in terms of prestige. We've got the minor <laughs> league guy to a big leaguer here. I like it. Oh, man. How's the offseason treating you? It's been good. Yeah, it's, it's been great so far. Um, you know, just preparing to, uh, you know, get ready for spring training and see how things go. So this is not going to be a surprise to anyone who actually watched the Pirates last year. You made your big league debut last year, and it's been a crazy journey for you to get there. We're going to touch – more on that in the second segment, but now that it's actually happened, and I know this time last year you added to the 40 man and you saw like, this is probably going to be something that could happen in 2021. What are your takeaways from that, you know, first big league season? Yeah. Um, it was a great year. Obviously it was a very difficult adjustment. Um, you know, early on I had success and then in the middle, I kind of got whacked a little bit, but I think that, uh, you know, finishing strong, I feel like I had a last, Last couple starts went pretty well. So I think that all that, all those experiences uh, are going to help that much more for, you know, this year or going forward. Um, now being up there, like I said, it was obviously difficult and I wish I had pitched better consistently. Um, but I feel like I learned a lot from those experiences. Like at the end of the year, I feel like every situation I was in, it was the same game, same situation, like runners on base, fourth inning in the middle there. I didn't get out of it, but then the last couple starts, I found a way to you know, breathe through it and, you know, kind of execute. And that was, that was really, uh, that was great for me. It was huge, huge for my development. I think next year, like I said before, going forward is going to, things are going to get a little bit easier. You had probably the toughest job out of anyone on that staff though, because you were the guy that we need to start. Okay. Bring Max back up. It didn't seem like you were really given much of an opportunity to get into a rhythm up in the majors or even in the minors where you had like three or four starts where you could get into that rhythm, you know, get used to those, same scouting reports, same pitching coaches. How difficult was that? Yeah, I think a little bit difficult. Um, you know, I'm definitely not going to complain about it because obviously you, whatever, whenever you can start in the big leagues, you know, it, it's a dream come true, really. That place is, it's the coolest place in the world. Like just all the little things that you wouldn't even think of as a little kid, like every single part of it is a dream. Um, yeah, it was difficult, but like anything else, you kind of get used to it. Um, I kind of at the end was used to that up and down thing and just tried to, when I was up there, execute the best I can and keep my routine as uh, as consistent as I can. And yeah, I think that I finished strong and finished on a high note. So hopefully continue and, and roll that into, into the spring training. Is there anything main focus wise that you've been, you know, that you took from that, that you wanted to apply into the off season or even towards the later parts of the last season? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, in the middle there, in the middle starts, um, starts maybe, I don't know, three to five or three to six, something like that. My dri- uh, delivery got a little bit out of whack. I got like very spinny instead of directional into the plate. And then when I'm to the plate, everything's you know, straightened out. It plays better. Uh, when I'm spinny, I start cutting the fastball. I lose velo by the fourth, fifth inning. And we worked really hard on that in between starts with Oscar and, and Hanny, you know, wherever I was, we worked on that. Um, but I think this year, I've done a ton of pre-throw drills, like before I even throw my plyo balls, ton of direction stuff, just so that's like second nature to me. So if it, if I do, you know, get out of whack for one pitch, I can snap myself right back into it. It can't be a start by start thing. It's going to be a pitch by pitch thing. So something I'm more aware of, and I think that's going to help, um, you know, get deeper into games. Like usually when I hit the fourth, fifth inning, Velo would drop to 92 uh, whenever I was out of whack at all. And that third time through the lineup, that's just not going to play. It's hard enough third time through. So that's something that I have to get better at. That's what I've been working on. Um, and other things, fastball, just kind of spreading it out a little bit more this year. That's the plan. Last year I lived at the top, which is good. Um, you know, first time or first two times through, I would usually have some success, but third time through, you know, guys would catch on and sit there. So I think spreading it out more, you know, up, down, two totally different pitches. And I think that'll make my change up and curveball and cutter slider play so much better. So and then other than that, um, Increased change of usage. I think that's going to be a big focus this year. Um, we had good results last year, pretty much just off deception. So we're trying to get it better metrically. So I'm trying to find that sweet spot right now of like turning the pitch over, but not changing my delivery, like not tipping it at all. And I'm in a pretty good spot with that. So now I'm getting ready to add the curveball and 
cutter slider back um, and the curve always switched to a knuckle curve, hoping to get more down or movement, more like uh, like sharp, I guess, more of a strikeout pitch. So I'm excited to see the numbers on that. I haven't yet. That'll be like a next week or week after thing, but everything feels good. So I'm, I'm definitely excited to, to get this year rolling. How much of that change with the curve is just grip? Maybe is it something different with those mechanics also? Um, I think it's grip, but I think some of it has to do with that directional stuff. Like when I'm to the plate and I, I can, I can find a way to get over the ball better when I'm spinning off of it, it usually would loop and kind of back up. Uh, but we switched the grip. We switched to a, to a knuckle curve. Um, guys usually can spin it more efficiently with that grip. So that's what we're going with. And in catch play, it feels great. Like it feels like I'm more, much more over the top of it and it's less loopy. It's more of a sharp, hopefully a strikeout pitch. Like I said, that's the goal. So. Whatever you do change something, like you mentioned the, the cutter slider that you also have, is it something that, you know, you get off a mount or in a facility, whatever, you just want to throw it a couple times or and then bring out the data, see how it's playing compared to the old ones, or how long do you stick in that first pro, first part of it? Yeah, that's the, that's the tricky spot. Um, I like to play catcher that I'd say now I've been playing catcher that for maybe four to six weeks. Um but yeah, the first couple of the day, you always want to just spin, see how it feels off your fingers. Then for me, I like to just throw everyone a little bit harder. Like, all right, that felt good. That was in front. Let's step on it more, step on it more. Usually when I speed my body and delivery up my arm, you know, your body just finds a way to, to catch itself back up. Um, so that's kind of where we're at now. It's pretty close to full speed. We just haven't gotten any numbers on it. So going back to the fastball also, is it moving it around? Is that something maybe you try thinking mixing in a two seam or sinker in there also, or is it just no four seamer? We can throw that down in the zone too. Also. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Four seamer down the zone. No, no sinker two seam. Hopefully the change up uh, w- w- metrically getting it better. Hopefully that can play closer to that two seam or, yeah. or sinker, you know, with, with some more, so more depth or fade, whatever it ends up yeah. getting, it's getting a little bit more of both than it did last year, but no, I think the four seams in a good spot and, I've had success with it up in the zone, but like I said, by the third time through, even sometimes second time through, like I'm sure it was on the scouting report too. Like my heat map Uh was bright red at the top, um, which is probably a problem. So I need to space it out a little bit better. I think that if I go down the zone with the ride, it gets, it can probably free some people. um, And I think all the other stuff will play better off of it. Or that's the goal. That's the thought right now. They, they got a, they got word about the tunneling and how, you know, the pitches play off of there. Up there. Is it difficult? Definitely. Is it tricky to navigate that every once in a while between like, okay, this is probably where my fastball plays the best, but it can't just live there the entire time because like you said, hitters will catch on to it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's a difficult thing. And usually when I when I end up throwing change ups or even later in the year, like it would start at the bottom of the zone, um, and it'd be a ball, but if they saw it at the bottom of the zone, they wouldn't swing. Um, so I think that, that was definitely a scouting report, look for things up swing early in the count. I remember that first Milwaukee game at home, I think three pitches in the game, they had two singles and a line out. And I just remember being on the mound, like, wow, that happened really fast. Um, but that was obviously the scouting report. So uh, yeah, you notice those things in game. And I think the quicker you can make the adjustments, like I said before, the better you'll be in the long run. So that's something that I'm also getting better at is um, you know, reading some swings and, and, you know, kind of looking at my scouting report, look, look, looking at my data. So I know, what the hitters are looking for. So I can kind of spread it out or kind of flip the uh, percentages a little bit. You touched on Oscar a little bit here. Um, What is it like working with him? Because he's someone that, you know, has, you know, that reputation of being really good with players and being able to, you know, have one foot in the analytical and the one foot of that, you know, I'm a former pitcher too. I know you have to have that bulldog mentality right there. Like Mm -hmm. where, where do you two click? Yeah, I think, like you said, get the nail on the head. It's a perfect mix of analytics and you know not trying to to change too much too quickly. I think that they knew that it was um, you know a little bit difficult going up and down. So I think that they did a great job of you know working on things, but not throwing five things at me at once. Like in those middle starts where I struggled, we were really working on direction. At the end of the year, uh, we were you know at the end of the year, so we were hanging a little bit. Like we were working on using my legs more and you know freeing up my arm things like that. So yeah, I think it was a, it was a great mix and I'm excited to hopefully work with them this year. Life is a big leader. How similar is it? And I know this is going to be a little bit of a loaded question with, you know, COVID protocols and everything, but how similar was it that, you know, whatever your kid 
you're thinking this is what it's going to be like whenever I'm a big league pitcher, how much of it's like, well, I didn't expect blank. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think it's totally different. Like as a kid, I never thought of, you know, life as a big leaguer. I would think about being on the field and, you know, being in those giant stadiums, but like, I don't know, you never thought of being in the clubhouse or the food before and after the game or the travel. Um, I mean, it, everything's just top notch, the hotels, like just the little things that you can't believe, like, you know, going on uh, flights, you know, from one place to the other, like the amount of food on the plane, like everything's just taken care of it. it, it like I said before, it really is the coolest place in the world. Like I wouldn't have thought of any of these things as a kid. Um, but I, I remember my first flight to Colorado, like I was just amazed. Like I was just sitting there. I, I feel like with my mouth open the whole time, uh, probably looked like a weirdo sitting there on the plane, but it was just awesome. It was such a, such a cool experience. Hey, we're going to take a little bit of a break here. We got a lot more Max Clinic to come up here. Stay tuned. And welcome back to the podcast to be named later here on the DK Pittsburgh Sports Podcasting Network. Max, last year, I, I'll be candid, you're not supposed to pick favorite children or favorite stories, but being able to tell your story, like how you were able to overcome shorter injuries, you know, adjust, adapt, grow as a baseball player was probably my favorite story that I wrote all in 2020. So I, I think some of that should be really touched on here because I think it's really what the Pirates are banking on as an organization with player development that they need to be able to find guys like you who are willing to learn and experiment and grow in that area. And I know that growth mindset has been hammered home with Charrington, with Shelton, with everyone. So Cliff Notes version, because people can still read the story <laughs> on there. I don't want to give that entire thing away, but I, I don't know. I'll hand the ball over here, over to you here. In, in your own words about how you, you know, figured stuff out your journey. Yeah. Um, I think all that stuff is just a difficult mix. Like w without that COVID year, uh, without that downtime, I don't know if I would have been able to figure it all out. So it kind of was a blessing that we were able to come home, regroup after mom was a little bit fatigued. And I think we had three months to really figure things out. If I tried to do that during the season, it probably wouldn't have worked. I probably would have been on the shelf again. Uh, so it's just a difficult thing to gauge. Like, are you going to work on that stuff during spring or in the season or instructs? I think everyone's situation is a little bit different, but it's definitely very player oriented. Um, all the data and all the tech is there. If you want it, it's not going to be, you know, shoved down your throat, but they're going to make sure that they tell you, you know, what your, what your strengths are, what your you know, unicorn pitches is, is the, the term that they've been using. Um, they definitely make you very aware of that. So yeah, like I said, I think that every everyone's situation is a little bit different. But for me, being able to come home, shut down, not think about baseball for a little while, and then really like deep dive back into it was uh, a blessing for me. I wouldn't have had the year, I wouldn't have debuted, or I wouldn't have been probably on the 40-man roster um, last year at this time. You, again, just for people who haven't read it, please do read it. I really do like that story. Uh, a lot of that was – Stuff you did at home, like you said, whether it was starting to really work with pilot balls, you had a homemade mound that you that you threw off of in the backyard. How much contact did you have with teams during that? Because I know you and Vic Black were texting or talking mostly every day at that point. But was there anyone else that you're going through there that's keeping an eye on you that whatever they do see, hey, this guy just hit 98, you know, on back mound, let's send him to the alternate site. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think with some of that stuff being on Twitter, definitely helped like get it out there a little bit for sure. Uh, but yeah, talking to Vic and, and Hanny and, and Tom Filer at the time, he was, he was the coach that was checking in with me. Um, but yeah, it, it would probably be a once a week thing from, from files. Um, Vic, we talked every, pretty much every time I touched him out, we talked or even early on, we talked most days, even when I was just trying to figure it out, like he, he was a huge help. Um, you know, he went through similar things. So I think that that definitely clicked. I think that clicked the, the connection between the both of us. Uh, yeah. Without him, without those drills and 
the backyard bullpens and our mound, and our plyo wall, uh, I wouldn't have been in this situation. So how similar or different is it here in 2021 and I guess 2022, you know, preparing, you know, you have facilities now, I'm assuming that, that are actually open again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely similar. I think that now, because of the unknowns, um, I definitely think I have some time to experiment with some things. So I think that I'm, I'm taking it a little bit slower. Like I, I talked about before with the changeup, and, uh, the last two weeks of bullpens have been fastball changeup only. Mm-hmm. And that's in a pretty good spot now. So I think that next week I can start adding in the breaking balls. I just don't want to throw everything in at once because I feel like I want to work on this, this, and this. It's just too much. And if I'm trying to work on the changeup, then the curveball gets better the other way around. So once I nail that changeup, I can add the curveball. Uh, any extra bit of mound work or mound time definitely helps identifying unicorns and i know that's something that's been thrown around with a lot of the pitching people whether it's oscar whether it's josh hopper what what would you say your unicorns were and like how did you find that journey or get there um yeah yeah i think definitely my fastball um when i shortened up i was able to repeat it better be on top um, get ride up in the zone. So that's, that's definitely my unicorn. Um, so I think I need to use that to my advantage. Like it, it works up in the zones, like you said before, now starting to work down the zone, going in and out a little bit better or using that pitch to, to kind of set up everything else. Or even I can go back to that pitch as well. Um, but yeah, I think shortening my arm up definitely, um, brought me, I don't know what my unicorn was before that. I really have, I have no idea. Um, I threw strikes maybe like, I, I don't even know. Um, yeah, definitely my fastball. And I think that will continue to be going forward. I feel like I can pretty much throw that wherever I want, um, you know, with some good spin and good movement profile or whatever the exact words are. Because that's, like I said, identifying it has been so important, but I guess the next step is how do you implement it? Because that's, Mm. it's one thing to figure out like, okay, this guy has that great fastball or great breaking pitch or, you know, just has great body Mm -hmm. movement. It's another four. Okay, now we got to apply this to getting hitters out. But there's so in that process. Process. How much of it was they gave you free reign to you know figure out like this is how I should use the pitch. How much of it is maybe you got a nudge from a coach or maybe one of them says no, 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 you got to do it like this. Yeah, uh, maybe all side. All goes back to the all side. Like that was a t- another time to really experiment. Like obviously we were trying to get each other out and, and compete, but still at the same time. I remember um, we'd be throwing it and Hanny would be the umpire. He'd be behind us. And he would say, all right, hey, you have two cutters this inning. Because as soon as people would hit my fastball, I'd go to the cutter slider. He's like, throw your curveball. He's like, it has to get better. Throw your curveball. Um, so I think that time of experimenting, I was beating guys up in the zone. So I think that's when it really clicked. Like, hey, live there, live there. And that's what I did this year. Um, and most of the time in the minor leagues, it worked. But then the major leagues, people caught on quickly. Uh, so now just knowing that going forward and at, at my end of the year meeting, like going over some of that stuff, like I said, the heat map was bright red at the top, being able to go down or even in. So righties can't lean over the plate or sit top and then lean over the plate for the slider, things like that. With those end of year meetings, I mean, not to get too much into it, but that's a part of player development also is, mm-hmm. you know, figuring out how do you improve in those areas? What should you be working on there how much of it is you know data there how much of it is testimonials how much of it is you know just the eye test that they brought up um i think it was a good combination i really do uh, you know they focused on on things that i got better at throughout the season you know some some mm-hmm. strengths um some growing points but they also said you know some stuff going forward um you know this is what we need to do this is how the numbers play and i guess there's a lot of future value in my change up if it gets better metrically so that's you know, one of the big focuses this year, um, like I said, we, we decided to switch the, the curveball grip to a knuckle curve to get more downer movement, more of a, like a 12-6 profile. So it plays better off the fastball up in the zone, up or down, really. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think I think it was a, a healthy mix, definitely. It wasn't it wasn't too much. Like, it was pretty easy to understand. They went over all of it. Uh, it was really cool stuff. Some, like, some of the stuff I've never seen before, like future run value. Like, I didn't know what that even was. So it's cool to go over that stuff. That's a new one for me too. I'll, I, I I could get the context clues with it, but that's not thrown out on baseball savant or anything like that. No, no, not at all. <laughs> what 
you guys have got a really interesting young pitching rotation, whether it's Contreras, you, Yuhure. There are a ton of really good young pitchers that are like in your boat right now that, you know, got some time up in the major leagues. And, you know, maybe 2022 is the year that you, you know, stay firmly in that rotation. First of all, just we'll, we'll start positive with the group of like, how exciting is it to be part of a group like that? Yeah. Yeah. It's really exciting. Um, like you said, with, with Yuhure and, and Contreras, even, even the younger guys. Um, yeah. When I, when I saw Contreras this year in big league camp, I just remember him from 20 not, or 2018 or 2019 in low A, And he, he was like two to five in low A. He was good. He was really young. I think he was like 18 at the time. And then seeing him for the first time, big league camp. And then his first game in Altoona, like, it's electric. It's unbelievable. It's every game. It's 95 to 98, like nothing below. Uh, it's incredible. So it, it's super fun to watch. And with Yahoo too, like playing catch with him, he's helped me a lot with my curveball, uh, stuff like that. Like he can just really, really spin it or he can really command it. He has five different pitches. Like it's pretty incredible that he can throw them wherever he wants. So yeah, it's exciting. But I think that, you know, it's definitely a friendly competition. I'm, I'm close with, with, with those guys and pretty much all of those guys. Um, but I think that, we help each other along the way too. Like we're always kind of looking out for each other or we were excited if one person went up, but the other one didn't. I think that we were all uh, definitely rooting for each other. See, that was the second part that the less fun part of the competition is like, you could root for these guys and you know, you've gotten some cracks up in the major leagues too, but is there any part that's ever like, man, I just put up five scoreless innings. Why, why am I not getting a call? <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think that, yeah, that, that's just part of it. But I think at the end of the day, uh, you know, if all three of us are pitching well, we're going to be pitching somewhere for someone, you know, down the line, if, if we're all doing our jobs uh, correctly. I got one more here on the player development side of them. We're going to take another break. But that's yeah. been something that I've really focused on, you know, in offseason coverage this year, because that's, really what's going to ultimately determine how good this team is, you know, how they're able to mold young pitchers and players like you into becoming big leaguers. You've had a couple years now with both how things used to be run and how things are currently run under Ben Sherrington and Shelton and other coaches in the minor leagues. What would you say is the biggest change or difference between the two? Um, I'd say it's, it's more, like hands off, like player oriented. Like we kind of more so came up with our routines and, and sat down with everyone and we got on the same page, but it, it's, it's not really fair for me to make a judgment either because with, with the old office um, I was in low A and high A. So like the rumor was once you get up to a higher level, it's like hands off, like just pitch well, um, things like that. So I think it's a difficult thing for me. I, I don't know if I can make a, a fair judgment because um with the old office, like I said, I was, I was just in a ball. Um, That's fair. And I didn't see, I didn't see the upper levels. So I think I was in that uh, like middle space, I guess. Okay. That, that's fair. That's fair. Sorry. That probably doesn't answer the question at all, but um, like I said, we're going to have pitchforks really and torches here in the comment section now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, we got a little show left to go. We'll be right back here in a minute. And welcome back to the podcast to be named later. In our lockout tradition, we are not talking about baseball for the final segment. And Max, you grew up in Scranton, Pennsylvania, which is a Philly fan country. And I knew going in, you were a Mets fan. But I, I have family out in Philadelphia. And if there is one type of fan that they really cannot stand, it's a Cowboys fan. You didn't by chance try to poke the bear at the link anytime this off season, did you? No, no, not at all. Um, I had a Cowboys jersey on underneath my jacket and sweatshirt and vest. I did not show the star anywhere. We kind of grew up like, I don't want to say anti-Philly, but kind of like ever, all of our friends and family members were, were Phillies and, and Eagles fans. And when they were good, um, 
you know, when they had that World Series run, like everyone was so down your throat about it. And then the Eagles recently won the Super Bowl and that's what they, you know, live on with. And it was years ago, a couple of years ago now, but they still talk about it like it was yesterday. Um, so no, I, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely a big Cowboys fan. Um, my dad grew up liking them. And I, I just follow along. Okay. You didn't show it. First of all, which jersey is it? No, it was a CD Lamb jersey. Okay. And uh, you had the Jerry Jones autograph on it or? I did. So I will never wear that CD Lamb jersey again. I have to get uh, another <laughs> jersey to replace that in my collection. You got it at the game or? I did at the game. Yeah, at the game. Um, we were sitting. It was like sweet level. It was a really cold night. So we figured, yeah, we can go inside and eat and come back out. And all the Eagles fans were like standing up and looking left. What's going on over there? And the guy in front of me said, uh, Jerry Jones's box is two boxes down. I'm like, oh, no way. I'm like, at halftime, I have to go over. I just want to snap a selfie or something. Um, so halftime, we ended up going inside to eat. Uh, Cowboys got a big lead in the fourth quarter and fans started to leave. I was like, oh, I'll just walk over there, literally thinking I was going to just snap a picture and it'd be cool. Like I have a picture of them. And someone was handing, they were handing a jersey out of the box to someone. And, um, I just was taking my jersey off. And I think before my jersey was off, his grandson was like reaching down. I said, does he mind? And he said, no, and signed the jersey and handed it back. Like gave me a thumbs up and waved. <laughs> so cool. I did. I just was looking for a picture and I don't know why. I was like, oh, I'll just take my jersey off and see what happens. And signed it. It's awesome. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah, it was definitely a good game. And, and they won. Um, yeah, so it was a great night. What a bonus it was. And they won as far in the playoffs as the Steelers, so we're, we're all good there. <laughs> Come on. That's not right. Come on. One of them has a lot more hope for 2022. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Max, thank you so much for coming on, man. Uh, oh, wait. Actually, I lied beforehand. A little baseball talk for this last segment because okay. end of the year, end of the year, you had that really strong start against the Phillies, and that kind of looked like a backbreaker for them. Atlanta goes on. They win the division instead. They win the World Series. Anyone bring up that maybe you, you cost the Phillies their World Series? Like, if the Braves can go through that playoff path, maybe the Phillies could have? <laughs> no, no. After the game, right. I was getting worn out by some family members. Um, but, no, then they went and got swept by the Braves. So, no, it wasn't my so, fault. Well, it was the back. Break. But it was great it was- as a Mets fan. I grew up as a Mets fan. It was definitely a little bit of a childhood dream, I'll be honest. <laughs> Good deal. Max, thank you so much for coming on, man. Uh, anything you want to plug, social media, whatever? No, no, I think uh, that was good. I appreciate, appreciate you having me on, Alex. Thank you. All right, thanks. And be sure to subscribe to DK Pittsburgh Sports Podcast, get all our feeds. Thank you so much for listening. We'll talk again next week.